As the corpses of Rahirim horses and their riders litter the fields of Duniyad, slain by our stalwart defenders, the full extent of Saruman's poison reveals itself. Theodret, Prince of Rohan, lies dead, his body now feeding the fish in the river Aizen. Marshal Eomer has been banished by his king, his army now wandering aimlessly near the gap of Rohan. And now tribeless bands of Rohirrim seek refuge in our lands. Fools! We shall offer them the same courtesy our ancestors received throughout the years. A comfortable spike on which to rest their weary heads. Conquest looms on the horizon, but first order must be restored within Dunland itself. Though most of my Brennan have honoured their vows, there are still those who seek to undermine my rule. The lords of Barad Vin and Bile have risen up against me. Good, let them do so now, so I can establish more loyal leadership in their stead. We shall claim our birthright yet. The Battle of Dunyard was merely the beginning. A united Dunlan shall soon cross the River Aizen and march into Rohan itself. Hello my friends and welcome back to the second episode of our Dundon campaign in 3rd Age Total War EUR and man it feels good to see that second episode it's just it's a bit of pressure that just goes away when I survived the first episode in any campaign um, just wanted to start off with just a massive thank you to everyone I know it's a cliche thing and I won't take too long and be like thanking literally everyone by name because that would take way too long uh, but as of right now as of recording this episode which is on on tuesday um the first episode has already gotten like 7500 views and like more than 200 people or something silly like that i've already put a comment it's absolutely mental um and i didn't expect it to be honest not because those numbers are that unusual i mean i do have a relatively large fan base for which i'm very very grateful but I was gone for a while, I was gone for like six months, so I didn't expect everyone to be like immediately piling onto a new video and being like, welcome back. Uh, just all your messages welcoming me back have honestly warmed my heart. So thank you all very, very much for that. Uh, but the best way for me to thank you all, I think, is to just straight up jump in, raid and pillage, because that's exactly what you've come for. Um, two things I want to just start off with campaign-wise. Number one, the helmet of Yaktak. If you remember on the previous episode, I talked about the helmet and I was like, what the hell is the name of the helmet that looks exactly like the one Yaktak is wearing, the one real life variant? It is the Sutton Hu helmet um, from the uh, the Raid Wall stash they found. It's an Anglo-Saxon helmet, not a Celtic helmet, as I erroneously stated. Um, so thank you all for those that pointed that out, that kind of satisfied the, uh, the history enthusiast in me to know that. Uh, and then there's also the Garrison building in Dunyard. I am building a garrison building in Dunyad, which I thought would give me extra troops, because it does say that provides two garrison units with free upkeep, but apparently it doesn't. It's kind of difficult to know for sure, because some mods add it, other mods remove it. It's uh, I can't really keep track of which mods and sub-mods have either free garrison units, like extra troops you get, or the ones that just give you a bit of free upkeep. Um, I hope it gives me free garrison units, I'm still kind of praying for it, but if it just gives me straight up free upkeep for two units, then so be it. I mean, it'll save me some money, and, and money wins you wars anyway, so that's that's good. Um, I did say future Izzy could deal with the money situation in this episode, so I will do that. Got a bit of cash to spend. I'd love to spend it on some troops, but honestly, I might just need more buildings. Now, a lot of people also mentioned that Dunland gets access to Slingers, which I would really like to have, actually. I don't think I've played with Slingers in Divide and Conquer before. I think last time I did that was in, in Rome Total War. But I'm not sure which building gets me the Slingers. There doesn't seem to be any of these. Uh, is it, like, part of the Barracks building? Clan Levy Grounds. Dunlanding shit. And Spearman, yeah, I'm not sure where I get those slingers from. Hmm. Siege blacksmith. Unless it's maybe from like a port? Nah, that seems. We can build long ships though, that's good to know for the future. So I don't know where I can get the slingers from. Uh, maybe that's part of the script of me just unlocking units like that. Maybe the tannery gives me slingers? No. So ideally, I'd get more of those upgraded tanners. 
But I think for now we'll save some money because I'm about to take Barad Vin and once I unlock it I do want to chuck some uh, some buildings in there as well. If I can pick up a mercenary I might? Bandits. Do I want bandits? I mean that that kind of cheap. But I do have three sets of pikes so I think I'm pretty safe honestly. I think I'll just leave it as that. Uh, my spy. I have moved my spy. My diplomat. Where is my diplomat? Where is my diplomat? He was moving towards the elves. Right, right, right. Yeah, you can keep on trucking over there. Okay, I think that's an internment. A lot of people have also warned me for the goblins of Moria, saying that we can't trust them. And I agree with that. We cannot trust them. But right now, I don't have much of a choice, so I kind of have to trust them. But know that we Don Lendings have no love for the orcs. They're just kind of a useful asset at this point, and we will abuse them and use them as much as we can. But when the time comes, we'll clean them up and claim their lands. Of course we will. What did you expect? We are the rightful rulers of everything surrounding the Misty Mountains. All right, Captain Perth is sallying out of Baradvin against King Yaktag the Bloody, one of those uh, rebel Dunlending tribes that has risen up against us, trying to get some kind of independence. <laughs> what a silly thought. He has cell swords. He has lumbermen, which are armor piercing. So gotta give him some respect. Don't want to put Yaktag against them. And he's got bandits, which, you know, they're easy to deal with. So I think the strategy is pretty clear, right? Just shoot these cell swords with our crossbows, so we kind of negate that high armor stat, and just kind of kill everyone else the old-fashioned way. Gonna try and take Baradvin with minimal casualties, but some casualties are probably unavoidable. Uh, but gotta make sure I leave some troops to take the rest of these lands. If I remember correctly, taking Baradvin should give me a new general, because this will be the fifth settlement we own. So let's jump in. And do the dirty deed. Alright, drop the rams and everything. Pull back the troops. Gotta give ourselves some room. Where is Yaktak? Oh, Yaktak's all the way in the back. So Yaktak needs to be the front line. You guys need to be the second front line. And then you guys need to get ready to flank. And that's all the positioning. Ooh. There's a bit of a hill bit. Hmm, kind of a fan of that hill. Could I get Yaktak to fire over our lines if I put them? I could, technically. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Uh, Yaktak, get on the, the highest part of the hill. I will still put my troops behind Yaktak for starters. Also, I like saying Yaktak, so I'm going to say Yaktak quite a bit. Probably saying it with a very Belgian pronunciation. Yaktak! I could say it in an American way. Yaktak. Probably gonna get some people mad. <laughs> I, I don't do accents very well. Um, so yeah, most of the intros are also just me trying to do an accent and not really working out. And at the same time, I don't want to lean too heavily into it because then it just it becomes too much of a joke. And I, I do want to keep it serious for the most part. Which is why I often try to get other people involved to record my intros. I do write them, but then other people just kind of lend their voice to me. Alright, so if you happen to be a talented voice actor, or not, if you just want to have a go at it, DM me on Discord and we'll see if we can uh, find you an intro to uh, to record. That would be cool. So I've always wanted to make this channel by the people, for the people, all that kind of jazz. It's not easy to do. Um, the veterans on the channel probably remember the community campaign I did a while back, which I have been meaning to make a, a second season, if you can call it that, of. But I, I haven't really gotten round to to making that a thing uh, but I try to get you guys involved as much as possible just because I think it's fun but if you have any ideas for that then do let me know which is why I do read every comment I try to reply to all of them but that has become kind of impossible with how many comments I have received on the first episode uh, but do know I read them all like a hundred percent so any advice you give even if I don't respond to it directly in a video if I don't mention it or bring it up it is living rent-free in the back of my head. There we go, we're shooting them. Doesn't always mean I'll apply it either, because I am a bit of a silly goose. Look at those lumbermen just falling apart. All right, I'm going to already move in my troops, because I want to have enough space for Yaktak to, to fire without risking too much friendly fire. Uh, shred those cell swords. There he is, the treacherous scum. He's got like a little butter knife. You got those cell swords with those massive claymores, and then this guy's kind of 
we kind of got a little, little, little sword. I mean, that's okay. It's not the size of the sword that matters. It's how you use it, right? Which is what literally everyone with a small sword would say. Hell yeah. We got the virgin small sword trader versus the chad yaktak with the long stick. Ah yes, I've managed to last one episode without making dick jokes. Good job, Izzy, good job. Oh well. Alright, losing more troops than I'd like. These guys are just going down real fast. I feel like that might be a little bit of friendly fire. Although, there's no deaths at the back line, so... Let's maybe plop the... Uh, I'm not sure what the range on that is, but... Okay, bandits are actually doing the work. If I could just get a kill on the tiny sword man, that would help out a lot. Surround them a bit better. Damn it. Okay, well we are kind of evenly matched in terms of numbers. And I'll probably heal a bunch as well. I also, that's also one of those commons that lived in my head rent free. I uh, need to check out some of the retinue that my one guy has who is still waiting in... What's the name of the settlement? The one general that's not on the field right now. Uh, oh no, wait, I moved him towards Dunyard. Never mind, he's actually in a good spot. Because apparently he has a herbalist. And for those of you that don't know, a herbalist improves the the healing of your troops after a battle, if you win at least. Okay, we've won. Them dying, well dying, routing, ended the battle. Because now I can flank the bandits, then this side collapses and we can just envelop them. Uh, Yuxak is uh, not wanting to shoot anyone anymore. Does he become a pacifist? That seems unlikely. Is Yaktak the bloody, not Yaktak the pacifist. I do like the look of the Lending Raid, it's just... Kinda reminds me of like... The Golic tribes in, in Rome Total War. They got those those shields. Like the Eburones, I think, they kinda use those shields. Alright. This also have barely done anything. With barely I do mean absolutely bupkis nothing. I'm not seeing too many bolts flying. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That was a good volley, but I'm going to have to ask you to stop fighting now, Yaktak. The risk of friendly fire is a wee bit too high. I've lost a lot of my spearmen, but that's that's alright. They're not exactly uh, too important. We're not going to be fighting any horses anytime soon on this flank. Though, of course, I'd like to keep as many alive as possible, because whatever remnants I've got left... Nice, good job. They will be sent to Rohan, of course. Alright, finish them. Let's try to get them to rout all at once. The there we go! 30%. 464. That's not too bad. We still have a decently sized army. Over a thousand men. So I think we can expand a little bit more. And we do get an extra general, or should get an extra general. Though I might have to place him on governing duties right away. We'll see. Alright, I think that's another occupation, right? I don't wanna... I, as much as I want to just have public order not be a problem, I do want to have money. Oh, there we go! Tarach Lang aids us! Dundon now controls five regions. Wolf's line has governed as well, and our future looks bright, hey! The young Bayrig Lord Tarach Lang, I hope I pronounced that right, has now joined, pledged his full support for the cause, and now takes the field for his king. Commanding the fine battalion of the Wolf Guard Axeman. Ooh, okay. He is sure to leave a savage trail of death across any battlefield he frequents. There are two key factions of the Wolf Guard who are themselves the descendants of Wolf's closest friends, allies and retainers, gifted with the finest arms and armor from Rohan after Wolf's conquest. These were then enhanced and repaired by dwarven skill beyond what our smiths could accomplish. For Wolf's granddaughter forged a pact with the exiles of Erebor and traded food, shelter and supplies for a year in exchange for their service as smiths. Repairing and enhancing the weapons of our finest warriors and their services as builders, erecting sturdy stone walls around Byrick. One of the factions of the Wolfguard are the most powerful and influential of the Brennins, led by Glirhuin. The other is made up of the Byrick elite, the descendants, not defendants, descendants of Wolf's Rohirric allies and retainers, who settled in Byrick and directly served the royal household. 
Tarakhlan acts as the representative of this faction, and it's clear that they now have no reservations and are happy to take the field. However, our conquest must continue to convince the remainder of the Wolfguard and to prove our worth to the White Wizard. Uh, what was that? Eight far regions by turn 80, I think? Yeah, we'll be fine. Not too concerned about that. Got a big army here. But I can only assume that's either the garrison or just one of those rebel stacks that will roam around over here. Anyway, where is my friend? There he is, Taraglan the Bloody. He looks more sophisticated than he did on the other picture. Wolfguard Axeman, 14 attack, 17 total defense, that's pretty good. Armor piercing, frighten nearby enemy infantry, that's really good. No bonus against cavalry though, so against uh, the Rohirrim he'll probably be less useful, but should still serve a purpose. So I kind of want to take Tarachlan and use him to take this last rebel land here. Uh, I don't think you're going to attack me. So I'll move him like that. I will move Yaktak right there to get a watchtower. I need information! Information! Where are you? Ah, oh, lord. Um, can I maybe move you, Freka, over here? This tower will keep vigil over the I'm land. still too blind. Yes, I'm going to move over the border Your and put a watchtower there as well. Just in case I ever lose Baradvin, yes, I'll still have this border this watchtower. Alright, Baradvin, we need to pacify these people as quickly as possible. Uh, I don't think culture is going to be a problem, no. I think just the tannery, right? Increased bonus culture, population growth, building income, tradable goods. I mean, it's not the most for population order, but it is big money. I think Herr ought to want to do the same thing, though it can't get a tannery there? No, apparently not. That's weird. I'm not sure what the... Uh, see to the fail then, okay. So, oh, that's actually the Enedwaith territory. That's probably why I can't get a tannery there, because it's historically Enedwaith territory. Um, kind of want to get roads there, but I'm a little bit scared that Herod's going to get attacked at one point. I don't know. I just don't trust... I don't trust Rohan. <laughs> I feel like they're going to betray me. Well, not really betray me, but just kind of backstab me over here. Do we... Well, they haven't taken Bregnas yet. I do need to keep a close eye on that. Okay, Bregnas has a massive settlement. And if Enedwyth takes it, that would be perfect. Because then my choke point at Dunyard is complete. Okay, so Herod seems safe for now. I think I'm going to build roads there. Maybe no, I'm going to get the Mason's Hall, the first hit of the Mason's Hall. Yeah. And then Dunlarak, Mason's Hall as well. Not building anything in Bairik at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. Could retrain them. Do I want Frickling at Hill Riders? They seem pretty awful. Like, they're just a uh, low tier. They're, on their picture it kind of looks like they use like slings or javelins on horseback but I think they're just riders so they could be good to run down an enemy but I don't think they're going to be too useful for me right now I think I'd rather get an extra spy if possible I guess we'll save our money for now um, let's see yeah I think it's just a matter of waiting and then moving and taking this territory possibly taking Tharbad but We'll have to wait and see for that. Okay. Daniad is my shield. Garrison almost finished. Then we'll find out if indeed we do get extra troops or not. A man can hope, right? But so far so good, I think. I mean, I don't want to be too cocky. But I think we're doing okay, all things considered. It's progressing the way I, I can't really imagine you could do much better. And getting an extra general right now, on top of the one we just got, is Perfect. He's done lending, he's a Dunnid initiate, which means he's well versed in Dunland law. Uh, most of his traits are okay. He's nervous of outsiders, we like that. Bit naive, but that's okay. I mean, his command is shoddy, but he's only 17. He's still got his entire life ahead of him. And where does he spawn? In Baradvin. Perfect! You can take. You can just govern here for the rest of your life. So this guy, does he have the herbalist? Yeah, he does. That's really good. Okay. No siege of Bregnas yet. Seems they're just kind of waiting. Rohan also seems to have calmed down a little bit. No clue where Eomer is. But that's actually really good for us if they indeed just kind of chill out. 
All right, Taraglan. Get a watchtower here. Move here. Get a watchtower there. And there it is, bye. It's just a village, so no walls, which means we can just kind of walk in there. I will move out the full garrison. No, I think I'll leave. There's no point in leaving any troops behind. You govern here. I think they'll take bye with these two armies combined. They'll get there in the next turn. And then maybe I can actually take Tharbad. I don't know if I want Tharbad. I think the goblins already took it. Yeah, the goblins took it. Never mind. Um, then that's good. I can just move south. At that point, I'll have six settlements. I think I can honestly start thinking of mustering an army and trying to move towards Eisenrun. Unless I want to take down Anadwaith first. Could consider that, to be fair. Take on Anadwaith and then move on to Rohan. I guess we'll kind of wait and see. Uh, I think I'll get a clan levy grounds here so I can retrain my, my own spearmen here. It's not that expensive. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, okay, anything else? No. See, it does say it provides two garrison units with free upkeep. Did I receive any free upkeep? No one received free upkeep here. But then again, I can't train these units, so perhaps that's just not how it works. Also, I think I will just lower the taxes for now. I am making enough money, I think, after the, those new buildings are finished. We'll see, I can always bump it back up again if necessary. But I think for now the growth will be better. Your orders, my lord. Yes, my lord. I'd love to get those long spears, but... Your orders, my lord. Okay. Uh, let's yes, make sure lord. we plop down extra watchtowers. As far as the eye can see. Okay. Yep, I think that's all for this time. Just kind of the calm before the storm, you know. It's always the first part of any campaign, pretty much. That's why they just dot around those rebel settlements near you. So you get some some free loot. But then, after we clean up those rebels, which we are very close to doing, we will do that in this episode. Oh, I had a mission? Oh yeah, I talked to Kazadoom, which I physically cannot do. After those are done, we will have to make an important decision on which direction we'll move. Which I can't really answer just yet. Okay, move you here. Uh, siege to it. And then Taraglan. We'll take care of that in a moment. Mission failed. Yeah, I mean, you gave me an impossible mission. Screw you. Typical Theoden behavior. Mason's halls are finished. Good, but I can't really do much because I'm too poor. Uh, but once the Tanri in Baradvin is finished, I will have more money. Yeah, and then we'll build stuff. Yes. Bye! Well, the garrison of Bai is about to go bye-bye. <laughs> I still don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Bail? Bai? I always pronounce it Bai, which is more of a French way of saying it. But there's no reason for me to assume it's the French way. So, I don't know. But, I mean, this garrison just looks yummy, tasty, ripe for the plucking. And then we can bring them back into the fold, which is another Dunland territory where I can build a tannery. And then the Dunland Heartland is just restored, reunited under King Yaktak. He had to get his hands bloody himself, but you know, par for the course. Let's go. Attack. Right, you. Let's take a look at our new friend, the Wolfguard Axeman. Ooh, they look really cool. I like their their. What is that? Is that chain? It's not really chainmail. It's more like splint. I think it might be Splint Mill. That's really cool. They almost look more, more Eastern than, than really Anglo-Saxon or Celtic inspired. Yeah, that's a cool unit. That is a very cool unit. They're going to do some damage. Uh, I do want to use this hill to my advantage. If I can get Yaktak up here, just sh shoot down on them. It's going to be a thing of beauty. Uh, it's a bit of a walk, but that's okay. I have time, you have time, we all have time. The more troops I have left, the better I, I'm i off. Honestly, it might not even be necessary. Well, see, I'll mostly let the generals deal with that shit, because they will retrain their troops, I think, even if the game says they won't. I know in vanilla dark, you have a hard cap of 77 to which your bodyguard restores, but that doesn't apply in mods that use the, the engine overhaul project, or EOP, which EOR and AGO use, so... 
It's fun to use all those acronyms. Oh yeah, AGO and EUR use EOP. So thus in DAC your BG unit is limited to 77 units. That just makes you kind of look like an asshole, which good. Because I'm an asshole. <laughs> fight away lads, fight away. Yuck tuck. Not exactly the plan I had in mind, but meh. Who needs plans? Look at that. This guy is just unbothered by it. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. He's bothered now. Oh, he just stood up. He got knocked to the ground by a crossbow bolt. And that guy just looked at the camera and was like, eh, I've had worse. <laughs> all right, mate. All right. Can we not kill that guy and recruit him in our ranks? All right. My man does not have a special ability, which is a bit of a shame, but who needs a special ability when you've got a big bloody axe? I'll just use Yaktak's ability then. Raiders! Alright, move wide. Spill the blood of Rohan. We're not facing Rohan right now. And I doubt we'll be facing Rohan for this entire campaign, so you might want to get some new voice lines, mate. Because there's going to be a point where we're not fighting Rohan and you no longer have to spill that blood. I mean, I hope we'll reach that point. It will take a while, but... Who's this lad? He's just a bit lost. Wait up, guys. I'm coming. I couldn't find my sword. Raiders. It seems Dunland doesn't really have that many voice lines, so... We'll have to make up our own voice lines. That's a nice head you've got on your shoulders. It's almost harvesting season. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mount and Bleed. Great games. Right. Come on, lads. These guys are already buggered off. <laughs> like a fighting squad. Uh, these guys are surrounded. Yeah, they broke. Finish the deed. Hong Kong. These guys have better morale than I, uh, than I thought. Yaktak, show them a thing or two about war. Which way? Alright, lads. It's gonna be nice to take this element. We'll have a nice... Oh, oops. A nice big chunk of land. Kind of what I like, instead of just having territory all over the place and just like blind spots and nooks and crannies from which you can get surrounded relatively easy. That's not going to be the case here. We should have a relatively, relatively straightforward front line, which I do like. I like because I'm a simplistic person, so I like simplistic behavior. Alright, Wolfguard. Chop chop. It's a good way to get them some experience. Victory will be ours. I think that's my general. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Don't have to worry about him. That's not his blood. That's very much someone else's blood. I do wish they, these guys got a special ability, like a, bit of a berserk ability or something like that. That would be cool. But you can't have it all. And I'm already happy I'm getting an extra general. Alright, come on. These guys are sturdy. They're the lending raiders, man. Don't underestimate them, they're actually quite good. Two, one, on to the next one. Those spearmen, however, are quite a bit worse. Our men are in command of the city. Hell yeah. And we shall never lose command of it for the rest of the campaign. Be awed by the there we go, I'm very awed. 92 losses, that's just nothing. And they lost like 10 that. Look at that, look at that, 322. Nice, good job. Death rattle. Ugh. I think I could do a good death rattle, talking about voice acting. I think that's my, my niche. All right, at this occupado, because there's absolutely nothing here, so why should we sack or exterminate? There's nothing. 349 people live there. I killed three times that number just now. Let's make sure those numbers go up quickly. The income's actually not bad. 
The farms have good harvest. There's some trade income as well. Oh, I'm a bit surprised in a good way. Alright, uh, you can actually already go out and put that. Wait, is your name the bloody two? We done landings aren't exactly creative with our cognomen. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit stupid. Isn't your name? Oh, you don't have one yet. Uh, I'm sure you'll earn one still. Huntmaster Frick. At least that one's cool. Uh, right. Well, I'm making money. So, yeah. So, it's the end of Let's just double check real quick. Boop, 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 boop. Holding five, seven, and eight regions. We have six. So, one more gets me another general. But I have run out of the rebel territory to take. Rohan wants to have another go, it seems. But, yeah. Perhaps I should not go after another wife just yet. And just straight up... Go for Rohan. If I can take eyes and run, that's another oh, another general. That's really good, actually. He's lazy and he bends the truth, but he has a pulse, so I'll take him. Oh, free money. Thank you, thank you. I was already going to talk to the elves. Yes. There, I can talk yes. to a fort. Hello. Uh, you just want to trade? It's good to yeah, yeah, thank you. you. And thanks for the extra money. Look at that. Just having a good time. Where shall we go next with you? Mm, I'm just kind of thinking who is... We've got the Dunedin, we've got Angmar, we've got the High Elves. I think we've talked to everyone, so I think... They'll move to Gondor, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, well, you're off for a while. Which is why I rarely get more than one diplomat. Tannery and Baradvin, good, big money. I think I'll get some roads here. I'll, I'll get the Mason Hall first and then get the roads, because... Saves me a lot of money. Uh, Dale and Dol Guldur are at war. That's very far away from me, so could not care less. Um, Dunyard building. Do I need extra troops? I mean, if they're just coming in with the one guy, I'll be fine. I think we get a grain exchange. No, I'll get a Mason's Hall in Bidic. Bidic, we want to get Mason's Halls as many as possible. So I could take this army. I'm not going to general spam too much, but I could take all these lads and move them down towards Eisenrun. Honestly, I could take Eisenrun. And Durwath afterwards, and then go for Foldberg, and I'll have the Gap of Rohan, which is just a really good choke point. Well, A, it's just one settlement that they're going to have to try and get to, and B, there's like nowhere, like no blind spots. I'm going to see every bit of movement they do. Alright, I still need more information on, Dur on Bregnas, sorry, not Durbath. Bregnas, Bregnas. It seems not why this pulled back, right? Oh no. It seems Rohan wants it, but they can't quite take it. What is not why? Like, they're not at war with Rohan, so... Bregnas might be their cause's belly, though. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you guys. Should probably clean up these rebels. It's not my favorite activity, but if I don't do it, they're just going to keep harassing me. Up down a watchtower. I will get more watchtowers uh, later on, but for now, I think I've already got a decent bit of vision. Okay. Actually, you can plop down a watchtower over here. Okay. Should I clean up these rebels? I mean, I really. That's just gonna be annoying otherwise. It's gonna cost me some troops, but it's also gonna get me some exp. You don't get to run, mate. Get back here. That's a lot of hill riders. I mean, they're not gonna do much, but. I wish I had more archers to deal with those lads. Uh, right, Dunyard is not gonna be a problem. I'll be able to retrain my spears. Yeah, no, just press the end turn. Slowly prepare for a war of sorts with Rohan, a proper war, instead of just getting invaded. And some people might disagree here. Um, they might think, go for an Edwith first. And to be honest, I'm not entirely convinced by it either. I think you can make a good case for, for both options. You can get married. If your potential wife looks like Eowyn, you go for it, mate. You don't even have to ask me. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Ah, good. Enidwyth has manned up to taking Bregnas. 
all the more reason for me to go for Eisen Run, I'd say. I don't know what this guy, Peard Bald, is trying to do, but whatever. Alright, the clan levy grounds are finished. Good, that means we can retrain these pretty boys. Could also... Oh, I can get a done here, done here. Oh, that gets me a lot of troops, actually. I can train my own long spears and get raiders, but I can also get these berserkers. They look cool. Fail and border guards. Okay. So they're just a better clan spearmen, right? 3, 4, 8, 3, 4, 6. <laughs> Marginally better, but their upkeep is the same. Actually, they just cost the exact same. So they're just better. I don't think there's any reason... Yeah, the clan spearmen are 5% faster, but we don't care about that. And I'm failing warriors. Oh, they use like a, a falx, I think it's called. That's pretty good. I thought a falx was an anti-cavalry weapon for the most part, but I guess not, because we don't get a bonus against horses. Okay. Um, so that's that's interesting. Oh, okay, so this is where I make the choice between the Dunnert or the Frekalinger. So what did the Frekalinger give me? Not much. Hill Riders. Hm. I mean, right now that choice seems quite obvious. So, yeah, it's either this or that. Um, and then we go to a Frekalinger military camp. Warband plates, warband host, warband sentries. Ooh, crossbows. Oh, right, there's Harriers, that's Freka's unit. Or we have the choice to go for the Dunyard Broch, which gives me oh the same units pretty much. Except for the, the Frekalinger, of course. Dunyard Warriors, those look really cool. And they're skilled against mounts. Damn, I want those guys. Yeah, I think the choice right now for me, fighting against Rohan, seems to be Dunyard done. Also, I like the name done here done, because that's so silly. I mean, we're not going to get it just yet. It's going to take a while for me to afford it, but... That seems to be the way to go. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Should try to get free upkeep for all my standard generals. But right now, that's just a bit too expensive. Yes. Alright, Captain Taran. Can you stop running, mate? You just ran yourself into the woods. Which means your horses such as they are, are entirely pointless. Alright, let's clean up these rebels and then march towards Rohan. Right, here we are. I mean, the woods look more impressive on the campaign map, but... I guess that's just the way it is. Alright, we gotta give those horses some respect, I guess, but not much. Uh, I mean, I just want to shoot them, really. Let's see what those hill riders look like. I mean, yeah, they look pretty crappy. Even the horses look sad. They just, they don't want to be here. But I hit him, they are not. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get too many horses in this campaign. This is a Dunland campaign, not a Rohan campaign. It is very much an anti-Rohan campaign, so... I mean, it doesn't mean I won't get any horses, but I think I'll mostly stick to infantry. Alright. Well, I'll happily shoot all of you, I mean... Happily use up all of my ammo. I'll make a quick jump cut to when the action starts, just so I can record a bit longer and feature more content in one episode. Okay, I've used up all my ammo and they just kind of took it, so we've killed almost half that army. And now we're just gonna go in and finish them off. I mean, there's not much else to report. <laughs> gonna try to get the Orthang Guard and the, the Long Spears up against the cavalry for the most part. But I'll just kind of take them all head on. It doesn't really matter too much. There's no need for strategy when you're simply the best. Better than all the rest. But the cavalry just seems kind of pointless. Like, they're just kind of awful. So they can charge me all they want. I just can't see it make much of a difference. There we go. Combat effectiveness. Reduction for them and in the case of rebels. It doesn't actually matter if I run them down or not if you win a battle against them They disappear on the campaign map. You don't need to kill. What is it? 85% 90% unlike with uh, actual faction armies So that's good because the most annoying part about dealing with these light cavalry is trying to catch them all at the end of a fight 
Yeah, those charges. They can't properly charge. Apparently, charges have been changed a little bit in EOR. So, to make a better distinction between proper Lancer Cav and just kind of infantry on horses. Although, my Clan Spearman kind of got gobbled up over here. And there we go. I can just end it there. 5%, 4%. I'll take that, you know. We got some experience as well. Not much, but something. And... No, we didn't lose that many guys and we can't retrain all of them, so it's okay. Kaboom! Glory, honor, victory. Yes. Let's go south, put down a watchtower along the way. Continue onwards. Towards our destiny! Uh, right. Don't think there's anything else I need to be doing, right? Everyone's doing their job. How far can I get while still having sight of Bregnas? Quite far. Up until here. Good. I need to know when the wife takes Bregnas, I just need to be aware of it. I hope they don't just lose against Bregnas and just kind of weaken the garrison, making it easier for Rohan to take it. That would be the worst outcome. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Alright. I uh, don't think there's anything else I need to be doing right now. I mean, there probably is. I am probably forgetting things. I know once we enter more mid game and late game and there's more settlements to manage and just more stuff to do, I always forget about things, but right now we're still small enough that I don't really have to worry about it. I'm also not too fussed by the deadline of uh, 80 turns because it just seems so far off. But I don't know, maybe, maybe I am just underestimating it. Alright, construction report. Barad Vin, Bayerik, Mason's Hall is good. We're going to go to Bayerik, get a grain exchange for cheap. That's all of my money spent. How much is the upkeep of my basic generals? 257. That could warrant getting an early meeting hall instead of the grain exchange. Just because it is a lot of money. And I think if I get a meeting hall, I'll get free upkeep for my general. I might be wrong, but we'll find out the hard way. Okay, Begna says yet to fall. You guys are moving. Nothing else tomorrow. to do. Yeah, they've been retrained. Perfect. Ready to go. Yeah, I mean, Eisen Run just seems too juicy. Just seems too good to be true. I mean, I know we have to murder our way there, but it just seems too good to be true at the moment. It's a good choke point. It's not that well defended. It's a better Solomon. I don't want to take Argont. I'm not going to cross the Guathlo just yet. I know it's rebel territory. And eventually I will take those lands, but not right now. I think Rohan does take priority because it also... Ah, oh, and it failed. So I could take Bregnas. But I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Because then I need to split my attention between Dunyard and Bregnas. I need to defend both. Whereas if I take Eisenrun, this is Eisenrun, right? Yeah. Then that's my new choke point and I don't border them anywhere else. Yes, my lord. I know, I know. It's, it's a very hard lord, decision to make. I feel like it is the one correct decision to make. I do want to get Freka involved eventually. But for now, Taraglan is going to be more useful to me. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to do. Nice. Grow up, please. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Taking Argon would put me at seven settlements. But it just seems it just seems too far out of place. If Enderdwaith ever turns on me to settlement, I'll lose straight away. Where did you come from? You came from the north somehow. We have a siege. Also, it seems like my vision thing isn't really working out because I'm constantly getting surprised. I have no idea where they came from. I need way more watchtowers, it seems. But again, it seems like a pretty easy army and Yaktak is nearby, so that doesn't really matter. Alright, uh, a change has occurred in Dorwinian. The Avari have returned after the sacking of Mornithel over 2,000 years ago and will assist the Winelands economically thus freeing up the Northmen to march to war, so they went for the Northmen choice. This may bring about a new golden age for the Winian, with rank after rank of stout Northmen to defend them. For those of you who want to see a Dominion campaign, I did a pretty cool one, in my honest opinion. It's one of my favourite campaigns still yes, to this day. Lord. There's a bigger army, Furumgar. 
but he can't make it to Dunyard. So I think we'll clean up Dun here right now um, with these lads and then gather an army. Construction complete of a meeting all in Battlefield. Does that give me free upkeep? Yes! So that's honestly a massive money pit that's now been closed. That's so much money I make extra every turn. Alright, oh, let's clean up that army first because I'll get some extra money. I know I should start rounding off this episode, but I can't have a single episode in this campaign so far. Oh, wait, I'm going to wait one more turn. Uh, I want to get these guys involved without destroying a Rohan stack. This guy did not expect Yaktak to be there. He's like, oh, crap, it will do. Yodling Spearman, your Erret Axeman. Ah, they're actually quite decent. And some Rohirrim. Here it's skirmishes. I mean, we gotta give them respect, the Rohirrim. I already saved. But the rest of them are pretty easy. Alright, start of deployment. For our mandatory Rohirrim slaughter. Get the archers in the front. Preferably I'd shoot the... Shoot the horses. Get a nice juicy line of anti-cavalry. And then keep the sort of softer targets behind. I love that my range units are also anti-cav. Are you going to move towards me? Yes, you are. Good. Good, good, good. There they go. Now who's the raiders, eh? You keep pillaging my lands, mate. At this point, it's becoming self-defense. You absolute donut. They had an axemen look cool. I like them. I really do like them. These guys also look pretty cool, especially when they're dying. Oh, they disappeared. To thin air. I mean, ideally, I wouldn't be shooting the... the infantry. Uh, move up. I'll shoot the... Oh, they're so far away. He's sending in his ranged calf. Which is fine by me, because he's not actually going to charge me. He's just going to, like, psych me out. Probably shouldn't have stacked up my troops like that, because those are hidden matches. are going to have a good time, but... I'll just kill them quicker. Oh, then a Cantabrian Circle. How cute. They're all doing Cantabrian Circles. Get the hell out of here, mate. <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are? I mean, they're cute, I guess, but... Just like that, I've killed a quarter of them, so it's not really working out now, is it? Come on, lads. By the way... Yeah, the hit him arches and, and skirmishes, they are quite good. Can't deny that. I mean, ideally, I'd also shoot to the hit him. Because those guys are actually a bit of a threat. They're also not going to do any Cantabrian bullshit. Mate, you're not going to win a skirmish fight against the Octok. Like, that's just not going to happen. Alright, well, I mean... They're not really doing much. So I'll get back to you in just a second. As soon as something uh, actually happens, because right now it's just a skirmish, which isn't too interesting. Alright, it seems they finally realized that uh, skirmishing isn't quite working out for them. They have lost pretty much everyone. I've left that captain alive because I thought that was funny. And also would have been just too much of a waste of ammo. Okay, so now they're marching forward, but I think I'll just have my generals finish them off. There's no need for any silly maneuvering right now. We got them right where we want them. Okay. Move in. Hey, what an axeman? Come back here. Let's compare axe size. Oh lord, it's not looking good for you. But it's not looking good at all. Alright, mate. That was a decent charge. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It's also the only charge you'll do. And there we have it. 
El Capitan is dead. 79% just ain't enough for me, mate. Which is where I wish I had some cavalry right now to run them down. So my infantry is pretty fast. 83. I think 85 was the benchmark, right? But I'll, I'll go up to 90 if possible. Just for some peace of mind. And I think it is possible. Look at that. It's moving up quite fast. 89. Come on, just one more percentage. Just a little bit. We are still catching some. Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. <laughs> it's as easy as that. As easy as pie. Captain Dunir, Captain Dunnowir. That was so bad, Izzy. What the hell? All right. Uh, experience, yes. The Orthang Guard. Close to getting a gold chevron there. Nice. Good job. Huzzah! Straight into execution. You go, mate. Get the hell out of here. And I got like 300 coins from sacking that camp. I mean, yes. sacking is our middle name. And now we have a full-on garrison in Dunyard. Clan Spearman, I'd love to retrain him, but I don't have any troops really available. Um, I could get a leather tanner and just get an armor upgrade for everyone. I feel like that's just a waste of time at this point. Now, I want to get these guys up and running pretty fast. And move towards Sizen Run. I don't think there's any reason for me to wait. Um, let's see. What do I want to do? I want to make more money, so grain exchange seems like a good idea. I also want to get roads eventually. Let's see what brings in the most cash. So a grain exchange is 765 in three turns. It brings me, let's see, uh, 343, 371. So that's not bad, it's about 30 gold pieces. Roads are a lot more expensive, I can't even afford them at the moment. But they would add in 147. 161, that's actually not that much. Yeah, no, grain exchange it is. Bloop, there you go. Do I have any money left for anything else? No. Okay. I do get a bunch of free upkeep guys now, but that's just from the clan levy grounds, I think. Although... No, I think that's from the garrison building. Whatever. Congrats. Okay... Gondor number one, eh? And Gundabad in the financial department. Okay. Let's end the turn. See what Rohan does. Rohan's manoeuvring in the next couple turns is going to make or break their campaign. And also mine. But yeah, taking Rohan quickly will, I think, just put me in a much better spot to go against Enedwyth. And I know Enedwyth can be a real pain in the ass. I know, but... I feel like Rohan late game can also be an even bigger pain in the ass. So. Frumgar is coming over, so I don't know, maybe I should just kill him along the way. I don't know. Could maybe be a fun battle to start the next episode off with. So we now also have the free upkeep of Drostan and Bile, which is helping out my economy massively. So I could now get roads in Bile, Baradvin, Herot. I want to get roads on all of those. So which gives me the most money? 70 up to 77. That's barely anything. 147, 161. That's slightly more. Baradvin, a port would also be nice. 149, 162. So it's roughly the same as Gerot. Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of tough. Is there anything else worth my time? Not really. Get some dwarven buildings, but... Is there anything else that throws me a bunch of cash? A Tanner's Guild, if I can save for it, but that just seems a bit too expensive. I mean, building income for them chicken farms isn't too bad. Could get that in Don Larak. Um, tough choice. Tough choice indeed. I think I'm going to start with Rose in Herot, and then we'll see afterwards. Okay, that's good. So we have an army marching towards Dunyard. What does the army consist of? Some Helmingas. That's a pretty botched up army. Question is, will they try and do a siege or will they just kind of ignore me? I mean, they are moving to Dunyard, so I assume they're going to try to attack me. Question, of course, is also do I want to wait for that? And again, I don't want to face all these horses on an open field. 
And then afterwards, I will move towards Eisenrun. Eisenrun right now is just easy grabs. I'm gonna keep funneling troops across, so I just I need to settlement hop pretty much. But the main goal is Foldberg. Take Eisenrun, then take Foldberg, clean up everything over here, and then I mean Edoras is not that far off. Helm's Deep is really not that far off. And I feel I can take those relatively quickly. Alright, that will have to wait for next episode though. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I do think we achieved quite a bit. We took Baradvin, we took Bael, we cleaned up a rebel army and we cleaned up a Rohiric army. Our economy is also looking much healthier than before. Uh, we also established trade rights with the High Elves. Um, just watchtowers all over the place. We have a pretty good idea of what's going on in our land for the most part. Although Rohan army still slipped by me quite a bit. This guy maybe... Uh, subterfuge is okay, so we don't know. But uh, that's going to be all for today. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I hope to catch you soon for episode number three, which uh, is looking to going to be quite fun indeed.